getting started. Hey. All right. So, y'all remember our inverse square business? It's inverse because this force is inversely proportional to the distance. That means that uh, if the distance gets real small, these two, look, I'm doing a thing with my hands. If the distance gets real small, these two objects get real close to each other. They, they've got a lot of force, you know, just like magnets. These two charged objects will be severely attracted or repelled if they're really close. But the distance is very small, but then the force is very big. If you make the distance big, well, they're farther away. They're not going to attract or repel as stronger. So if distance big, force gets small. They do, they do the opposite thing from each other. So they're inversely proportional, force and distance. And it's like my inverse square because it's squared down there. Inversely proportional, just like F equals blah, blah, blah over just D, would normally mean that uh, you make the distance half as much and the force goes uh, gets twice as big. But now, uh, because of the squared here, you make the distance half as much because two squared is four, the force gets four times as big. And that's what we use on this question. You don't actually have to do all the math and the formula. You just got to look at it and be like, oh, that's uh, over D squared. So it was 50 newtons before. They were 60 meters apart, and she moved them to three meters apart. So the distance got half as big, and now the force will be four times as big, not two times as big, because of that square. So if it was 50 before, 50 times four is 200. So the force gets four times as big, and that's all. You don't even have to do all the formula math. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Well. Uh, where's my remote? Oh. All right, all right. I'll leave it right here. <clears throat> so remember on Friday, y'all did a thing. Or are you looking? Looking at everybody? No. Francisco, are you looking? Francisco. Francisco. Can you hear me? Francisco. You can't hear me? Okay. What? <laughs> uh, uh, what was it? On Friday, y'all drew some circuits with the appropriate symbols, with the the X for the bulbs. These bulbs, this is an alternate symbol for a bulb. You can draw the circle with the X through it, or you can draw this circle with the loop-de-loop -loop through it, whatever you like. They both mean lamp or bulb. Uh, and y'all drew the little resistors in there, which is the squiggles, the, the squiggles. And uh, you drew the batteries in there. That's a battery. Uh, the little key that I uploaded has a different symbol for s battery and then for a single cell. I don't care. Uh, batteries are made of multiple cells sometimes. Um, I don't care. Just it's, As long as it's got a long line and a short line, that's fine. You don't have to draw a whole bunch of these. That's extra. <clears throat> so, on Friday we also, we did all those things, uh, drawing the circuits with the appropriate symbols. And we also calculated total resistance. We did one for series and one for parallel. So I'm going to do this example where the first thing we do is calculate total resistance. This is one of your questions today. And th this thing has like four different questions about it. And I think two of them are required and two of them aren't. And I'm going to do all these questions. Um, hopefully it helps. So we've got calculating the total resistance of this whole circuit. Now this circuit is a series circuit. It goes in a loop but then it has this whole section that's in parallel. But like this parallel part is a component. We're gonna treat it like a component in this series circuit. So to find the total resistance, I'm gonna start by finding the total resistance of this area. And because like that's the only thing that has resistance, I mean these batteries, I guess, you know, but these are batteries. They're not resistors, so we're not gonna count their resistance. They might have a little resistance, but we're not, we're not gonna worry about it. But since this is the only thing that has resistance, the total resistance for this section will be the same as the total resistance for the whole thing. So total resistance. Remember this one is that one over one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3 and all that. And there's five of these. Come on, it's a lot of adding things up. I keep putting little ones down there. I'm not ready for that yet. All right, so each of these resistors are 1.1 ohms. So I'll go 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, 1.1, there, okay. And if I simplify that, one 
over 1.1 plus 1 over 1.1 and so on. There's five of those, so it ends up being 1 over 5 over 1.1. And if you like, you can simplify this and say divide them by a fraction. It's the same as multiplying by its reciprocal. So 1 divided by 5 over 1.1 is the same as 1 times 1.1 over 5. And, but you still have to use a calculator, so whatever. It ends up being 0.22 ohms. That's pretty cool. And so I did that one. Check. 0.22 ohms. I don't know. Uh, don't worry about it yet. Just pay attention. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, we got to do the voltage across each resistor. Let's see. Voltage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's start by finding the total voltage here, because this is where the voltage comes from. So we've got to figure out the total voltage for the series part, and then that's going to go into here, and then we'll have to figure out what happens in there by looking at the rules. The rules! Well, okay, we've got total voltage. Dang, we've got to look at the rules already. This is in series. So we've got to, go, we've got to go figure out how to do total voltage in series. Uh, try to scroll. Computer, try to scroll. Okay. Series total resistance is we just add them up. Um, we just did the parallel section, so that's why we added it up all weird, like I said. But we're doing series right now. So the total voltage, V1 plus V2 plus V3. So you just add them up. Okay, that's easy. Okay, so we got 1.5 volts and 1.5 volts. So we're just going to add them up. Add them up. Okay, total voltage is 3 volts. So I guess that's not my answer yet. That's, that's not the voltage across each resistor. That's the voltage that goes into the parallel section. So if I say, OK, 3 volts goes into there. Now let's go look at the voltage rules for parallel. So we're going to go back up, rolling up. There, you're awake now, computer. OK, so that 3 volts goes into the parallel. And then what that's resistance, that's current. Oh, voltage is the same anywhere in a parallel circuit. Oh, well that might be easy. So that's one of them. Okay, so if three volts goes in over here, then <coughs> if, if voltage is the same anywhere in here, then if the total voltage is three for this area, then voltage is three everywhere. So cool, that is the answer. Three. Oh, that looks like a naughty one. Cool, 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 cool. So we did this one. And all right, so now we got to do the current flow through each resistor after the switch is closed. <sighs> well, it doesn't tell us anything about current. So we, but we have V and R. This is where you have to use V equals IR. And that's, what, that's what's new today. After you get total resistance and total voltage when it asks you for it, you're going to use both those in V equals IR to figure out, I'm going to use this purple mark. There we go. Yeah. To figure out the missing thing. And it's Honestly, in this assignment, it's always going to be current. You'll find both of these, and you'll solve for the total current. Now, one thing with this formula, I know you all used it before in the Ohm's Law thing. That's what this is, Ohm's Law. Um, if you plug in total voltage, like if I plug in the total voltage here, that means that this is going to have to be total current, and this is going to have to be total resistance. So when I look this up, this is going to be total current now. And oh, that's not an equal sign, bro. There. And when I plug in resistance, it's got to be the total resistance. I can't go plug in the 1.1 and then expect it to work. I have to use the total resistance over here that we got. All right. We wanted to say equals total current. It says total current times 0.22, so I'm going to divide both sides by 0.22, and I get 13.6 amps. Mm -hmm. Now that's the total current, so that's how much is going in right there, 13.6 amps. So now we've got to go look at the parallel rules for current and see what happens to the current when it goes in there. Let's go look. Uh, I can't really read this. There. 
Okay, so for parallel, there's the resistance ones. We already did that. We already did the voltage ones down here. We're doing current now. So the total current is equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. So you add up the individual components and then you get the total. Just like with voltage, you know, 1.5 plus 1.5 was 3. Um, we don't have what these are though, we have the total. Uh, thank goodness they're all the same, they're all 1.1 ohms, so we all, we know that they're going to have equal current to each other. So, since there's five of them, this total current will be split into five. So 13.6 divided by five makes 2.7 amps. So, like we're using that total resistance equals I1 plus I2 plus I3. So that 13.6 amps equals 2.7 amps plus 2.7 amps plus 2.7 amps plus 2.7 amps. Is that five already? No, we're not there yet. 2.7 amps. There, five. So since that works, is this marker dead too? Come on. The current across each of these resistors is 2.7 amps. This last bit that I did is one of the not required questions, and this this uh, uh, circuit being a split one that's half that's mostly series but has a parallel section, it is a complicated one that I'm not putting stuff like this on the test, and that's why I did this question. So it's not but required. Y'all's in general, you find the total, you find the other total, use V equals I R to find the missing one, and then you may still need to look at the rules, but it's not going to be as complicated as what I just did. So. Most of these are series circuits. Once you find the total current, um, it'll be like, okay, so you've got a resistor here and a resistor here. What's the current across the first resistor? And you go up and look at the rules for the current. So you have, you have the total current. You want to find out what the current is in these individual places. You go up and look at the rules in a series circuit. It says current is the same anywhere in a series circuit. So if you have the total current, that's the current in this place and in this place. So. But you're basically done when you find out I right there. Check. The end. Uh, questions? Concerns? Prayer requests? All right. Just kidding. Fair.